Hey, welcome to the world's first wireless factory and the home of radio. SOS equipment made in this factory saved thousands of shipwrecked survivors, including those from the Titanic and the Lusiania. Today we salute Marconi and the men and women who worked at this first factory. God save the Queen! God save the Queen! Three cheers for Marconi! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Pam Swaby. Are you one of the organisers of this splendid exhibition? Yes, for the last 15 months. What's this board here about? Well, Chelmsford Remembered is on Facebook and all the local residents in the community are putting on pictures from about the 1900s. There's a Julia Houghton Hill who has got some beautiful pictures and she's now giving us a lovely write-up. And some of the pictures were of Marconi and uh, it occurred to me that it would be good to have a people's memory board. So I've invited anybody who comes to the exhibition to put up posters and hopefully make contact. This gentleman this morning came in with his pictures and he, it's his father, but he doesn't know the date of the photograph. So I'm hoping somebody will come in during the next three months and we find out where it is. His name was D. Wilson, foreman at PCB Manufacture New Street in the New Street building. So it'll be interesting to see just what little gems we find out. What sort of people have you got up there? Um, this is Stanley Charles Church. Um, he was born in 1918 in North London. Um, there's a write-up about him. These are, these are Marconi people. He was soon reclaimed by Marconi due to the shortage of skilled workers for vital communications and radar equipment. George Blenkin was a successful jockey who in 1925 had won the Westwood Maiden Handicap. He and his wife Gertrude came to Gallywood in 1939. George had been promised work as a groom, but this never materialised, and so he worked for Marconi and then for Hoffman's. This is David Cook. David Cook is still alive. Uh, he was employed as a de design draftsman at Crompton Parkinson and then as a mechanical designer at Marconi until his retirement in 1988. It's a memory wall. It's a memory wall, and it's the people's wall. So anybody who comes to the exhibition can bring along photographs, memorabilia, and put it up here. How has the exhibition gone today? Very well. <laughs> Very well. Um, lots of interest. Um, we are a little backwater of Marsham, but people are seeking us out. Um, and it's open from 11 till 3, every Saturday and every Sunday. I think it's our nation's history and we have to preserve our heritage. And that's what we're trying to do. And hopefully we will have, sometime in the very near future, a dedicated space to Marconi's legacy. What's your message to the citizens, not townspeople, citizens of Chelmsford we're regarding this exhibition? We are giving our past a future. And do you think this could ever be a some small corner still Marconi? Oh, definitely, definitely. And I think um, I think the community would appreciate it. Not only that, it would in, increase tourism to the area. Um, we're actually at this exhibition organising taxis. If anybody wants to go up and see Oakland's museum, um, we can call a taxi and they can do visit this exhibition and Oakland's. What does Oakland's have that we don't? Um, they have a beautiful display. Um, of, of our industrial heritage. Um, but we also have Sanford Mill on the 23rd of April, it's Marconi Day, and that's when Sanford Mill opens, and uh, the public are very welcome to go there, particularly for the children with science activities. So why do we need Marconi Science Works when we've got Oakland's and we've got Sanford Mill? 
because we feel there should be something right in the centre of the city. It's quite a walk to go up to Oakland's museum um, and if it was in the centre of the city it would be obviously much closer for people to get to. The schools with the health and safety um, regulations now are finding it difficult to take the children out whereas if they were in walking distance of the city centre and there were science activities going on we have spoken to teachers and they said it would definitely be supported. Malcolm Noble, Chairman of Chelmsford Civic Society. What I've seen is as results of the hard work of people who've set up this exhibition to show the people of Chelmsford what their heritage has been and how important it's been to wireless telegraphy, the history of wireless telegraphy in the 20th century. And what are the Civic Society's plans for the future of its Marconi inheritance? The Civic Society regards the Marconi inheritance as central to the heritage of this city and therefore we will be trying our best to promote the two main places that are linked to Marconi. One of them being obviously where we are in Hall Street, the original factory here, and secondly the recently refurbished New Street factory um, in the other end of the city. Are you disappointed that um, your bid to secure the ground floor as a permanent memorial exhibition, show place, uh, museum uh, called Marconi Science Works has not come to fruition. It's a missed opportunity for the city, a city that has lost so much of its of heritage that what's still there is very important and we could have used it. I went and spoke to the City Council when the uh, application for planning consent went before them and try to put across the case for the use of at least part of this Hall Street building uh, for the, to promote the Marconi heritage so that the children of this city can know what has gone before and how be proud of it. Do you think uh, the Age of Miracles isn't dead? The exhibition room in there looks uh, a lovely open plan uh, space that, well, could be made for Marconi Science Works. Well, it's a start, isn't it? It's a start. And we hope to raise the profile of Marconi so they get the people of Chelmsford to come to visit this exhibition and hopefully get behind us in the future, the Civic Society, uh, and hopefully in the future the City Council as well to promote the Marconi heritage in whatever way we can. It hasn't been for want of help from the actual owners of Hall Street, is it? They've been very helpful. Uh, That's absolutely right. They've been totally supportive of this and keen for this event to happen. Is there a message you've got to the people of Chelmsford and Civic Society members regarding what you've seen today? What message would you say? Show your support for promoting the Marconi inheritance. Come to the exhibition sign up to the events, go on the Civic Society website and book through Eventbrite to come to these events. It's only a notional cost of £5 and some of the events are even free. Come along. I am Peter Turrell, uh, Chairman of Marconi Veterans Association. I used to be at New Street in Marconi Communications as Director of Publicity and PR. Again, next to me is my grandson, Thomas Turrell, who is an excellent follower of all Marconi's. He has all the photographs and all the books that have ever been written about the company. And every week, he reminds me of what's happened on the wireless, as he says, and not the radio, the wireless is what happens to Marconi in Chelsea. And gentlemen, why are you here today? Well, of course, we've got to celebrate Marconi. Uh, over 100 years since Marconi established this lovely factory here in Hall Street. And very fortunately, uh, a nice exhibition showing all the early works of Marconi is taking place, which will be here for three months. And we are trying to encourage a lot of people to come and see what the famous Marconi company did in this town of Chelmsford. It was a sleepy town when Marconi's first came here and for over 100 years 
he produced the finest products ever produced for communication purposes, both in wireless and television, satellites and radar. Mr. Tyrrell, may I be so rude as to ask your age? Yes, I'm just over 80 and I had 48 years with the Marconi Company, uh, the best time of my life. I travelled the world for Marconi's as head of overseas sales, selling the more modern equipments uh, which are available, cameras, transmitters, etc. Presumably you never had the pleasure of working at Wall Street. No, I didn't. But my grandfather did. He was a carpenter when the factory originally opened and he made the wooden boxes which went uh, uh, to encompass the Marconi equipment made in those early days. His name was Norrington, Thomas Norrington, and he was one of the first master carpenters that Marconi employed in 1902. I didn't start in engineering in any shape or form. I started in a clerical work with the borough council. That was my early days. Sounds very boring. Absolutely boring it was, until I came into the Marconi organisation and found all the products that they were producing. And I, eventually I was able to go and sell them in many countries of the world. How come you've been the mouthpiece of Marconi? How did that happen? Well, I was interested in the publicity role and whilst I was in uh, the publicity department, running the publicity department, I was able to delve into all the history of the company as it was in those days by obtaining photographs and uh, tapes, etc. And then I started collecting uh, Marconi equipment uh, for a very long time. And, uh, As you mean surreptitiously, you'd pick up the old oh, bit of equipment and, and save it, knowing that it would just be dumped? Well, yes, very much so. In fact, uh, knowing that uh, it, uh, 1998 was uh, approaching, I very carefully hid all the Marconi cameras over uh, the school in New Street, eventually putting all of them into the uh, Borough Museum at Sanford Mill. Uh, they on, the, on the QT? On the QT because I knew that once the uh, company collapsed then they would all be destroyed. And, and well it, did that come true? Was it, was there many things destroyed? No, uh, I think other people like myself very carefully hid these items and put them into the museum uh, where they are now. Utterly magnificent. <laughs> um, what do you think about the, the fate of Hall Street? Um, we, you know about the campaign uh, by Marconi Science Works to save it. Um, are, are you disheartened? Because really, look look at New Street. I mean, we haven't really got an in situ museum at neither Hall Street or New Street. No, I'm very disappointed that this place is not going to be a museum. We would have liked it to have been, but it's unfortunate not. The Sanford Mill Museum is doing a great job, but we do need a more central museum in Chelmsford, and I'm hoping that possibility of the Shah Hall or other places could be made available for the Marconi exhibits but bear in mind that the old Marconi building in New Street is now a cosmetics uh, outlet uh, from in the United States but they do house a number of Marconi bits and in time I think they will open it uh, not to the general public, but to the uh, person that wants to go and have a look at some of the Marconi works. But no, you're quite right. We would like a central place for a museum to show the Marconi products in Chelmsford. And right now, Oakland's is doing a magnificent display, aren't they, with Marconi? Oh, absolutely. They could, they're coming into a, a, a bit of money, aren't they? A bit of lottery money. I mean, many millions. Who knows? There might be room to... Uh, for the council to create a, a museum there. Yes, I, I agree entirely. They do extremely well, but again, I think, uh, who knows where the museum is? There's nowhere in Chelmsford where you've got an indication of where the, the Marconi uh, company was or where the museums are. Wouldn't it be a good idea to have something like a, a port, porter cabin just outside the Char Hall which stated all the aspects of Chelmsford, the history of Chelmsford, which is absolutely fantastic. What do you think about it, Tony? I think it's absolutely fantastic what you've done here, the committee, absolutely first class. It's brought back to life Marconi. Yeah.
And we did try and fight for the label, didn't we? We did fight yeah, and did yeah. try. No luck, no luck. Yeah. But at any rate, this has all been well worth it. And we've still got stuff to come from Museum of Bologna oh, yes. up more, on the yeah. walls still to come. <laughs> I'm waiting for the phone call to rush over and go and get it all. And thanks to Tim Wanda, our curator. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, um, Message for Tim? Message for Tim. Well done, yeah. Tim, really. Yeah, no, Tim's done a lot of good work for this. Yeah, Mr. Cow, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Cuddle up together. Oh, yeah, okay. That's it coming up. Yeah, friendly. Looking towards me. Oh. Oh. Brilliant. That's fine. Right. You're just sort of ringing the bell there. That's it. That's it. Just holding your own stroll up. That's it. Oh, yay! Oh, yay! Oh, yay! Welcome to the Marconi Exhibition here today. God save the Queen.